My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to another video of mine about industrial design. I'd like to run you through a rendering demo of a vehicle. Um, this is a demo uh, that I did and I traced over the top of another vehicle just to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, sketch out the vehicle underneath. That way you're not so concerned about the perspective because you're basically using an underlay and that uh, has all the perspective in it that you need. The important thing to remember here is where your vanishing points are. If you don't understand where your vanishing points are in the sketch that you're sketching on top of, um, it could potentially confuse you even more. The advantage of having an underlay is that uh, the proportions are already laid out, the wheels are in the right place, the driver's in the right place. So if you're doing a design project where you're basically uh, styling the outside of the vehicle, because uh, that's really what car design is most of the time, you can't really even call it design, it's, it's really styling. Um, this is a quick way to allow you to uh, draw over the existing vehicle without violating the package too much. Make sure that your wheels are in the right place, that sort of thing, and allow you to focus on, on the task at hand. So once the sketch is done, I start laying in some basic values for the um, reflections. Here, I uh, actually forgot to start the video recording uh, for the part where I put the marker down on the page for the initial reflections. I started with a light blue marker and then came in through with a darker blue marker. The two values do coincide relatively. Um, I add a little bit of purple uh, as the vehicle wraps around the back side over the top on the hood there. And this is just a little visual cue to uh, tell the viewer uh, that that surface is in fact wrapping back around uh, on the other side of the vehicle. Once I've done that, um, what I'm doing here is I'm just laying in like a little contrast box behind the uh, vehicle. And I lay in uh, some of this violet to sort of infer that that's what's reflecting in the hood. And in retrospect, I should have left it alone after that and not gone in and added the blue because I really dislike it. Uh, and now I'm stuck with it. Um, I do adjust it later on digitally in Photoshop um, to try to make it a little bit better and add some of that violet back in. But I really just wish that I had left it alone um, after I put in the violet. So I'm going back, I'm just uh, enhancing some of the outline to make things kind of pop a little bit. I'm using uh, the ellipse guide there to straighten up the edges. I don't actually allow the marker to touch the edges of the ellipse guide so I don't get any marker on the ellipse guide. I raise it and run it against the edge of the uh, marker, uh, the plastic part, not the nib. Typically when I do vehicle renderings, I do the wheels first. and the the point of that is, is if you mess up the wheels, um, you can then start over versus uh, doing the entire rendering and then going back. And if you don't get the wheels right, then you've wasted all of that time. Uh, in this case, I didn't do that. Um, I was, you know, the point of the exercise is to show the reflection. So um, I came back and did that a little bit later. I'm using the ellipse template just to uh, uh, ellipse uh, in the... Uh, rims and lay out the wheel here, the one that's closest to us. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a five spoke wheel. I grid up the wheel in perspective and you can see I draw a circle and I draw my five points. I'm going to duplicate that in 3D. Everything still has to be in perspective and go to the vanishing point so I can get my five points on the rim uh, correctly. So you see I've got them laid in and I'm just uh, putting the spokes together there to make the five uh, point rim or five spoke rim. Now I'm putting in some warm gray actually in the wheels. This tires or rubber tends to be a blackish brown, uh, often a very warm color, earth color. 
uh, it helps distinguish it from the vehicle and uh, also anchor it to the road a little bit. I'm going in next here and I'm sketching out the highlight or the reflection uh, in the wheel. It's going to be a blue wheel and honestly I completely blow the reflection here. Um, I do it upside down. Um, I do get the reflection right but it is uh, wrong. Uh, and I have to go back and correct this in Photoshop later. I have the horizon in the wrong spot. Uh, the horizon line is towards the bottom of the wheel, not through the middle of the wheel there like that. So I, I fixed that later. My apologies. I'm just ghosting in uh, some seats here. Nothing uh, very precise. I'm just giving the viewer uh, the information that there are some seats. It's an open air vehicle. It's very loose. I'm going back in and I'm adding the shadows underneath the wheels. Here I am cutting out a photocopy that I did of the vehicle itself. I'm going to use this photocopy as a mask. This is kind of an old school technique. I love to use this with uh, some spray paint to spray paint the background. Um, and I'm just dusting in here a little bit of black. Um, I actually had a can of purple and uh, once again things didn't go right. Uh, there was no spray nozzle on the purple so I couldn't lay any down as I again wanted to have that purple to uh, hint at the reflection in the vehicle in the hood there. So I have to add that in digitally and you're going to see that next. Now we're in Photoshop. And uh, the first thing I do is I create a mask of the vehicle to lay down and fix my background as I really hate that box and how it came out. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just putting in this background to help punch the vehicle out uh, a little bit. I lay in kind of a dark um, purple, uh, kind of a ground shadow, and then a lighter mauve on top of it to uh, help justify my uh, purple reflection in the hood there. I come back in, I'm sweetening up the reflections throughout the vehicle here with a nice darker blue. I'm using a uh, multiply layer to uh, allow some of the original rendering to come through and uh, that way the reflection isn't super intense. Next thing I'm working on here is the wheel a little bit, um, correcting that reflection because it's a dish. The reflection is actually upside down to the way it is in the uh, body. So basically it's you're looking at a concave surface versus a convex surface on the vehicle. And so I make some adjustments there a little bit on that. I darken up the wheel as I feel that they should be a little bit darker than they are. Uh, I go in and I add a little bit of shadow behind the wheel uh, against the vehicle as well. And on the inside of the tires, I make some adjustments to the entire image itself to uh, increase the contrast. I fix the reflection behind the wheel. I fix some of the uh, grill that comes out behind the wheel that you can see a little, little tiny bit of. It's actually an air vent uh, because this was an open air engine vehicle before and it's all covered now. So I want to make sure that there's plenty of air flowing out of the engine to uh, cool it. I go in, I'm making some more adjustments to the tire and the front of the vehicle needs to be a little darker, a little cast shadow from the wheel onto the vehicle itself. And that's it. There's some additional highlights uh, here and there on the vehicle, but that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also check out my video on demand series on Vimeo. The link is located below. Feel free to share this video and any other of my videos on your favorite social media site. Thanks! If you like the music in this video, check out Roarlock's Bandcamp site and let them know you like it. Rock on!